Hey Joe Moss from Fellow Tennis Nerds and welcome back to the 1990s. Hello fellow tennis nerds. I hope all is well. Can you play tennis, modern tennis that is, with a classic racket? The answer is yes. Um, case in point for this video is Charlie Burroughs, a talented young 22 year old player uh, who plays at the highest level university tennis, club level tennis in the UK. Uh, this was shot at Radder Lawn Tennis Club in South Wales. Big thanks also to James Lloyd who I've been emailing back and forth with. He's a fellow tennis nerd. We like to nerd out in our conversations about different rackets and uh, James took the initiative to record this video with Charlie. Uh, they used to hit the practice and uh, and James kind of was the instigator of of getting Charlie to switch from his Bubble Up Pure Strike 98 Project 17, the Generation 2, uh, which is also a good racket, a typical modern racket, very stiff though, uh, to a Head Radical Tour Candy Cane from 1998, which means that the racket is actually older than Charlie in the video. And Charlie hits a, a really modern type of stroke, really heavy ball, and he does it with an old, really low powered and plush feeling frame, which is the Candy Cane, a frame I really like myself as well. It's the PT57 mold, which uh, became the Head Pro Tour, still used on tour by Murray, Popperin, Karatsev, yeah, many, many players. It's a beautiful frame in all its different paint jobs and, and uh, just a brilliant frame for control but not forgiving at all, not going to give you free power. What has happened in the racket industry over the years? Has nothing changed since the 90s? Are we still getting the kind of same product? The changes have been small, but gradually rackets have gone a bit thicker in beam, a bit stiffer, bigger head sizes overall. That's what you see today, that the typical modern racket today is a 100 square inch 1619 pattern around high 60s stiffness strong racket at 300 grams. That's the typical standard racket today. In the 90s, uh, early 90s, it was kind of a 90 square inch, typically Prestige Classic. You have the Vacuum Pro from, from Fisher. You have the Pro Staff 85 from Wilson, a huge uh, bestseller for a good reason, very good frame. Fed used that, Edberg used that, Sampras used that, Courier used that, it was a huge success. There's a videos about these frames on my channel if you search. The head sizes were small, 95 was a big head size. The Head Pro Tour came after, the, after a while and that racket is still going strong, as I said, in, on the tour today. Even though pros use it today, even though some rec and club level players like myself use the Pro Tour mold today, the PT57 mold, it's uh, still not the average frame. And, and the, the average frame you will see is something like this uh, Instinct, where you have a, a quite thick beam, medium high stiffness, open pattern for more spin and easy depth. A racket that's easy to use has a huge sweet spot and not at all similar to what you see here, which is a Pro Tour 630 in a flex point paint job. It has changed, but there were wide body frames also in the 90s. I've used one myself from time to time. It's a bubble out soft drive. Uh, I really like this frame as you might know and uh, it's very open pattern, quite thick beam but a bit lower stiffness and a bit of a better feel in my opinion thanks to the fiberglass. These are all personal things. Some players like a crisper, stiffer feel. I like a bit more plushness uh, and a bit more control. It's just how I enjoy to play tennis. You should play what you like. This is from 2004 so it's also getting on in age. See what Rafa uses, wide body, thick beam, easy spin, easy power. What was rare back then has now become the norm and it can be seen also among the pros uh, on the tour. On the WTA tour this is kind of the standard frame. Rackets over the years, they've gone stiffer, bigger head size, open pattern, easier to play with, but some people still use these old school classical buttery flexible frames and uh, I do that, I really like them. Still enjoy playing with other more modern frames. Some rackets like the Prestige, they've kept the stiffness pretty low but they've increased the, the sweet spot a bit with the bigger head size, now it's 98 square inches. So it's a very small change, there hasn't been really any drastic innovation. What's mainly been happening is that they've been trying different dampening technologies to see if they can kind of reduce that stiffness um, that together with stiff polyester strings have 
driven up the number of elbow and wrist and shoulder injuries we've seen among rec and pro level players over the years. These uh, polyester strings are quite stiff and should be used with caution. Uh, they're beautiful in the way that they give you control, you can string them really low, but you have to use them with caution and don't string them too high. And I'm saying too high, I'm meaning like don't try, try not to go beyond 51, 52 pounds. 23, 24 kilos, uh, I, I would recommend staying below that if possible. And most people should string lower than 20 even to, to save themselves and their arm a little bit. Some companies have tried to innovate a bit more than others. I have praised the Wilson Clash over and over because it's like, because it's a thick beam racket with an open pattern, a decent power level, but still a very flexible feel. So they try to marry the old and the new into a new innovative frame. It works, it's definitely not perfect, there are some consistency issues from the string bed, not everyone loves that very very flexible muted feel, but it's, it's a very solid uh, effort to innovate. Same with the head gravity where they try to make a bigger head size but keep the thin beam, keep the low flex and to make a bit more forgiving racket. That's also kind of a throwback but a step into the modern world. It's all about what the the racket feels like, what the feedback it gives us and how we perform with it and how it feels when we swing it. So all these things come into play and, and technology uh, does, hasn't really played a huge role into that yet and that's why many players still use these old school kind of nostalgic frames uh, with the PT57s or uh, 6195 s and so on. I'm not saying uh, newer rackets are worse, I would say that they have usually bigger sweet spots, easier power, they, they're generally easier to use. I have several friends that made switches from a 6.1 original, for example, the first Pro Staff 6.1, to an Arrow and uh, would never look back because it's such, a, it's such an easier frame to play. He, he got much better depth, he had classically trained strokes, but just felt like everything was easier with the Arrow. So there are examples of players who want to go back from modern to the old school and fa find ho home there. And there are players that drop the old frame, take a new one, more forgiving, more powerful, and would never look back to the old stuff because it's so much easier to generate power, spin, uh, and have a bit bigger sweet spot with the new racket. So the pros and cons with everything, that's what's been happening. Rackets are easier to use these days, but many racket nerds and tennis nerds do miss some of that beautiful feel that the old school rackets brought us. I hope you find this video interesting. Uh, please click like, share it with your tennis friends and support the channel. Big thanks again to James and Charlie for, uh, for taking part and, and recording this video. I really appreciate it. That's all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis. Hey, join us and fellow tennis nerds and welcome back to the 1990s. So, in 1993, Head contracted Andre Agassi and they made what you will know as the Head Radical Tour Bumblebee Oversize. You'll see a nice little one here. And then they went from that on to the, the Zebra. I think the pro stock coat of those was PT59, I might be mistaken. But around the same sort of time in 1993, you had players like David Wheaton that were using this little specimen, which is the Head Graphite Tour 600. And Head decided that after that and the Prestige Classic 600, they were going to make a slightly bigger uh, player's racket. And they went off that mould to create the PT57 with 1993, I think, David Wheaton swapped to the Head Radical Tour 630. This one weighs about 348 grams. And then about six months later after that, I believe, came the one that everyone talks about, which is this little one here, the head Pro Tour or PT630. Uh, this one's been adjusted a little bit, so it's 342 grams, uh, 340 swing weight, and uh, about five points headlight. But moving on from that, there we have it, my personal favourite, uh, the head PT57B, aka the Radical Tour Twin Tube. And they went from that, the final version uh, was this, which you may know as the Candy Cane. Uh, 
Genesis then moved to this, which personally at the time I wasn't that keen on, but this is better known as the PT113P mould, uh, famously sported as a mould by the one Mr. Novak Djokovic, although he has some form of twin tube, I don't know, custom layup, modern day, has a different grommet, different lengths, I don't know, whatever, but that's, that's roughly where it started. Uh, personally, I then moved on to these, which were the liquid metal prestige mid pluses, and currently the two frames that I play with at the moment, which is the TGT293.2 Pro Stop Code uh, Head IG Prestige, and this one, which I confess I love. It's nothing like the original in some ways, but the Head Pro Tour 2.0, and please ignore the uh, original bubble up pure drive sneaky shot. That's uh, something else for another day.